Hello, my name is Rocco Fusco, currently a business development manager for Polymation. My current focus is logic controllers and HMIs. Today we're going to go over a setup and configuration of an Emerson variable frequency drive, uh, talking back to an Emerson PAC controller over Profinet field bus. We're going to start with an overall view of the system diagram showing hardware layouts and configuration. We're going to go over where we would, we would find on the Emerson website, where to download documentation, some user-defined function blocks, and of course the GSDML definition files for slave devices on Profinet. We're going to connect up to the Emerson PAC controller using Prophecy Machine Edition. And then we're going to go through the steps of configuring system hardware. We're going to demonstrate where to find the GSDML files and how to import that into the machine edition tool chest. Along that, we'll try to give a little example on how to actually use the user defined function blocks that have been created to talk to the drive and some example code for a simple VFD control via the Propinet uh, field bus. This is pretty much a picture of the demo equipment that we're going to be using today. This is just the front cover of it. You'll see that we have a seven inch quick panel control. We actually have a IC6866 VFD drive. It has a motor, emergency stop switches, and all the wiring is behind the hood on here. So we, we're not gonna go through the actual wiring of this particular drive. The overall little one line diagram of the communication network for this particular demo case is we do have the IC866 series of variable frequency drives. It will be connected on an ethernet connection back to the Profinet controller on the CPE100 PAC controller. We're also gonna have a small piece of RSTI EP slice IO that's gonna sit on that Profinet network. We also have a quick panel that's tied back into the CCNet port so we can have access to the PAC controller so we can actually do a couple little um, pieces on starting and stopping and, and actually showing you some speed commands and on this particular VFB drive. The other piece would be is just to give you an idea, we're going to show you how to actually configure a Profinet drop, grab the SDML files for the, the variable frequency drive, and how to configure that along to I.O. memory within PAC controller. We'll do the same thing on the RSTI EP for some remote I.O. We're not using much of this remote I.O., but there are some wiring in the back for supplying power to the drive, resetting the drive, and enabling the drive from an electrical standpoint. We decided in this particular demo to actually sign this to uh, memory addressing within the PAC controller, but understand this can be put into what's called variable mode, and these can be symbolic variables. Basic wiring of the VFD drive for control, if we didn't want to control this over the Profinet communication layer, we could very easily do hard wiring to the input of this particular drive, and this could be controlled standalone with just a handful of switches and some pots or adjustments for changing the speed of the drive. We're going to try to give an example of how to use a custom user-defined function block that has been set up with most of the control taken care of for the VFD drive, and then we'll just have to create a few individual reference bits for starting and stopping the drive and controlling the speed of the drive. And we can use this custom function block uh, over and over, just give it a new instant name and it will create all the variables as part of this block. So it makes it relatively simple uh, to get started. The VFD parameters on, that you will need to set up in this, we're just going to show the things we need to be able to set the drive up to communicate over the field bus. But there's also a piece of software with a machine edition where you can connect up to this drive and go through a list of parameters for changing many different functions and how this drive works. This is just the definition files for the VFD drive. Uh, there's eight words of inputs that are going to come in on analog inputs one through eight. It gives you the definition of what some of the bit variable definitions are. These are the inputs that we're going to get back from the drive for status in control. And then there's also a handful of output words for the drive for 
doing drive command signals, as well as speed reference, torque reference, and ramp, ramp times. Okay, let's take a look at the Emerson support site. Uh, this is the link that you'll take right to the customer center. And at this point, the customer center is the main area for uh, your portal to get into all the documentation, firmware files that are necessary to support Emerson machine automation solution products. If you're looking for things by hardware, you can categorize it to make it your search engine a little bit more narrow. If you know what you're looking for and you know the keywords, you can search in this main file or main window here. So we're looking for variable frequency drive landing pages. Landing pages are the starting point for just about every product that's listed on the support site. So in here we narrow our search down. It comes up on the second hit. We're looking for pack motion, VFD, IC866 product line. This will bring us up to this landing page. There are landing pages that look just like this for just about all their products. Uh, and this contains all the links to the pertinent information that you may need to support this particular product. So from manuals to important product information to data sheets to instruction manuals to application guides. In this particular case, there's a VFD. If we're using this on Profinet. This is a definition, the definition file for using this VFD on a Profinet network. So this is the file we're going to need to configure this as a slave to the Profinet controller. So we're going to go ahead and click on here just to give you an idea. I have all these files downloaded to a file on my desktop, which I'll show you later. So you would just click on here and then, you know, pick on where you want to download that file, say save. We can go back to this page and look for a few other things that we want. This application note. Okay, this is something they're going to use in our presentation. We download those, same thing. You'll notice that there is a GFK is the, the number for the document. So this is 3167B. You know by the, the suffix of this letter B, this is a later file than an earlier version this that has a version A. So we wanted to download that file. And of course, this supplemental file here contains a whole bunch of things that we're going to look at in a minute. So we would download that as well. So with that said, let's just go look at the, the folder that I downloaded these to. If I go to my desktop, go to Emerson Variable Frequency Drive, and these are the files that I downloaded here. So there's the GSDML file, which we're going to come back to this particular file later when we open up the programming software, and we're going to show you how to load that into the tool chest. So this is available for this Profinet Slave device. This is the exact same concept that you would use if this was a third party vendor that's not part of the Emerson Profinet controller, but since Profinet is managed by Profinet PI, uh, this open standard comes in really handy. So we could very easily be doing the same presentation with an ABV drive, a NEDEC drive, as long as they have a Profinet scanner connection, we can import their files in and program them in right into the Emerson control platform. There's another folder in here. It's a zip file. We open it up and look at the folder. There's a handful of program files in here. These are used for tools to actually develop your program um, in several different ways. So if you look at some of these zip files in here, these are actual program files that are applications that are complete applications that actually kind of get you started and are a working project like the one for the demo case. This is a complete program that has every piece of hardware in a demo case that I showed you earlier to actually run a complete cycle of different ways of controlling this particular VFD. There's also uh, user-defined function blocks for different functions for Modbus communication and our Profinet communication. You can also export user-defined function blocks out of your, your projects that you create and save them in a format, format in XML. This way you can actually import these custom user-defined function blocks into all your different project needs. So with that said, we have everything we need here to get started on the application. So at this point in time, we're going to take a quick look at the PAC Machine Edition software. So let's go ahead and start that up. This is a place where the software package can, you know, pretty much develops all the products that Emerson MAS has to offer, all their micros, their midline PLCs, their high-end PLCs, their HMIs. Uh, it's a great little tool that puts everything all into one environment. Just a really quick little 
update on here, standard Windows stuff. There's all types of ribbon bars across the top for easy access to what you're trying to do. The utilities tab we will look at somewhere later in this presentation. Uh, we'll look at the Profinet DCP tool, which is a tool that's very makes it very easy to configure and start up your Profinet IO system. Um, a VFD tool, very easily from this point to fire this up and then connect up to the VFD drive and change parameters and or watch performance. Uh, with that said, we'll go back into the environment. We have a navigator. This is how you navigate through your projects that are located on your computer or on your network. It's a way to organize your files. It's also a way to get in and create your project files as well. The inspector is a great little tool. It's a configuration GUI that helps you modify any aspects of just about every any particular object you may have in your programming environment that you're using to develop a program. There's a feedback zone, great little tool for doing cross-referencing of, of variables as well as constantly trying to bring you up some information on where to find help as well. There's a companion window that will do that for you. Uh, the main programming area is here, multi-tabbed environment. So you can have multiple tabs open at different times. You can cut and paste between different elements of your program. You can run this particular environment in multiple instances and, and copy from one to the other. You can build objects and, and drag objects into your screen. So with that, let's go ahead and start a project. Um, I'm just going to do it on the base here. So new project, and we'll call this uh, Emerson VFD. So we're just going to blank just create a blank project file. This is just a name. So this is our, our project name file, Emerson VFD. We're actually going to do a, a pack controller, which is called the CPE 100. We're going to right click over here and say add target. Go to controllers. It's a rackless standalone CPU. We're going to pick this. This is going to pull up a window that's already set up to bring in that particular controller and give you all the base parses that we need. So under the target here, we can call this controller and give it a unique name. That's our that's our target that we're going to be starting with. There's a things for data watch windows, very helpful tool. We're not going to go into that today, but we're going to take a quick look at the hardware configuration and show you how, how it would take to actually configure this particular hardware that we're using uh, in this presentation over Profinet. You know, a couple of things you have to do. This particular standalone controller has its own, has two Ethernet sections in here. The Ethernet is for communication. If I double click on here, it's going to look for an IP address. We'll just configure those with some generic numbers for now. So this is just setting up the IP address for the program communication and for the controller. You'll also see that we have on the Profinet side of this controller, this is a separate Ethernet NIC card. If you look in the inspector box now, we can go in here and actually look that this defaulted to this IP address. Um, there's things in here we can change. We can change the name of our LANs if we want to. We're going to leave the defaults today. There's a range in here for Profinet slave devices. So we, we're set, this is set up, it's wide open. You know, the first slave device will set up at, at one. And the, the environment and beauty of the Profinet controller is I can have 10 different slave devices on here. I really don't need to go in and set the IP addresses on them. They'll automatically get assigned by names. We'll use the Profinet DCP tool to be able to find all those devices on a network and then we'll just give them all unique names. And the nice thing about the unique name is if you ever have to replace that particular drop, you just give it its name and all the parameters for that particular slave is going to come automatically downloaded over the Profinet network. And this is how this, these pieces are set up. So we're all good here. Uh, with that, let's go ahead and actually add our VFD drive. So we're going to add an IO device. This is where you would actually select the GSDML file. So we're going to scroll down here and we're going to pick the VFD file. 
as you, if you can notice, there's different manufacturers in here, Turk, Festo, really doesn't matter who the manufacturer is as long as it's uh, qualified to be a Profinet slave and it has a GSDML file for you to import. And on here, we're going to pick down here our, uh, our Profinet drive right there, Pack Motion VFD. That's the configuration file we want. And now that actually adds that drop in there. Now, I mentioned earlier I was going to show you how we would import that file. So I'm going to go back over to our Views tab, and I am going to open up what's called the Tool Chest. On my Tool Chest here, we actually have there's many drawers in here to use in this environment. We're only going to concentrate on the Profinet devices. I'll call this up. Here's the Profinet settings that we were just looking at. They were selecting from. If I needed to add another GSDML file to this tool chest, I would just right click in this area, go to Assistance, Import GSDML file. And in our case, on mine, we had it on my desktop. It was under this folder. And there is my GSDML file. I would just double click this, and then that file would then automatically show up in the Profinet drawer. And it will be in your environment for whenever you want to use it. So if I look at the Profinet cards here, this first slot is normally the generic stuff about the head end on this device, on this network device. But here in slot one, if you remember earlier in the presentation, this are these are four output words that we are going to write to the VFD drive. Now, by default, this actually picked up the very first address of analog output one. Very easy to change this as we add drives. These drives are gonna take up a total of eight input words and four output words. And if we drag this in with our user-defined function block, now we have an instance of names and we just have to give it its name and it's automatically populates. So this is uh, this by default turned into that. Very easy to change this by double clicking and picking a different I.O. address. And again, I mentioned earlier, we can turn this into variable mode and actually do symbolic variables in this page as well. Slot two automatically configure itself for this starting point of analog output one. And then there's two double words that come into this product and they start it analog input five, and of course it's using four words there, so it's up to analog point eight. So that's all we need to really do to configure the I.O. addressing for the VFD drive. In this particular demo, it did have a drop of slice I.O. with four I.O. modules. It had an eight point input module, an eight point output module, a four point input analog input module, and a four point analog output module. So we're gonna go ahead and here and right click again and say add an I.O. device. We're going to go back into our, our GSDML file. This is the latest. Everything that the high, has the higher numbers are the latest configuration files for uh, GSD files. You can clean these up if you want, but a lot of times if you're working with older projects, you may want to keep the old GSM, GD, GSDML files around. So we're going to collect, select this. That's our definition file for our RSTI EPIO. We look at this, we have our network card on this particular drop. We're going to right click on here and we're gonna now start adding the IO modules that are part of this drop. So there are four modules. The very first module that's next to the network interface is a digital input module and it happens to be a 1218 module. So if you look down here, Eight digital in, two wire. We'll drop that in. We'll look for our, our digital output. Our digital output happens to be a 2218 is the model number. Right there. The analog input card is a 3164. So we'll go to our analog input selections. Look for 30, 3164. Drag him in there, and of course our analog output module is a 4164 module, and those are just the part numbers. We can drag in there. Those are the type. There's multiple different types of I/O modules for the Slice I/O product. We'll say OK, and with that we have one last thing to to do here. And this particular hardware configuration would be ready to go. Other than we don't, we haven't done any programming yet. 
So let's just take care of one last thing here. Where do we want these digital inputs to come in at? They're going to come in at percent I1 through I8. This is going to come in through percent Q1 through through eight and pretty much straightforward. This actually you're going to find out that this one came up to analog input nine. It was the next available analog input in that that table that was available. So it automatically filled it in. Same thing with the analog outputs automatically grabbed the next four that were available at any particular point in time. You can double click in here and change it address anything you want. And a reminder, this can be set up in variable mode where you're just putting in symbolic variables. With that said, our hard work configuration is done. And the next piece we'll do here is we'll actually go online and download this to the controller uh, and actually import some user defined function blocks and maybe demonstrate uh, how the VFD drive works. Uh, we configured out the, configured the hardware. Um, I downloaded the program to the CPU at that point you would it would go in the target area, we would connect, it'd be in um, programming mode, you would download, that's how you would download to the target. Um, one of the things that after you configure the Profinet scanner modules for the remote IO drop, including the VFD, you need to launch the discovery tool. So if I click on Profinet and launch discovery tool, you'll see that this will go out uh, a couple things here you need to check on the ethernet network say refresh device list and this will go out on the profinet field bus and look for all the slave devices that are connected to that network and there we have it it found three different devices um, this is our vfd this is our remote io drop and this is of course the profinet controller module these are the unique names that get assigned to these. If we were to go in here, we could actually change it, change these names right now. These default names came up and already populated with green check marks saying they're OK. The first time I do the discovery tool, it would look for MAC ID addresses. It will assign an IP address and it will give you the opportunity to name this device a unique name. The great thing about that is if you ever have to replace, let's say, the drive, all you need to do is go back and put the device name back to VFD-1 and the controller will find it and it will download all its configuration to it. So it's really a great little tool there. <clears throat> the other piece that um, I'm going to do is I'm going to go offline on here for right now um, and show you just some programming steps that I put in place just to show a demonstration of how to drive with interfaces and logic. I'm going to disconnect this right here. I'm going to go into my logic and one of the things I did is I imported this VFD PNS uh, user defined function block. OK, and the way you would do that is you would go on your program blocks here. Import block from file. This is going to be a dot XML file that we downloaded um, earlier. We did put it on my desktop. It's under this folder here. And you're going to see that this is the particular block that we would import. We would select this, open, and then that would actually import it in the file. That winds up showing in here. In order to see what this block looks like, you can double click on this. This is the user defined code for this block. This is all the code. It's underneath and written to interface with the Emerson VFD drive. So what we do in the main program is we actually do a call function and we call that block, which is right here. So in the effort of saving some time, I populated these variables, run, reverse, stop. These are the things that you have to do to use the interface with this user defined function block to control the drive. Notice this drive has an in, a drive name of VFD1. That's the instant name. I can call this block a second time, give it a new name. It's going to be all individual symbolic variables for the, each instance of this block that you call. The things that you really mainly have to do is if you remember on the configuration, our process data inputs are on analog input one. 
we signed that one. So one to four are coming in here, five to eight are coming in here. And then we also have the outputs that are um, going out to analog output one. So those are things that assigns this user defined function block to real hardware. Okay. Um, we did do a, a little HMI screen that I'll show you on here. We're going to actually click um, and select our target and connect. We're going to go online with the controller. You can see some of the status in here for what's being controlled. Um, one of the things we're going to do is go ahead and open up the HMI piece on here. So as you can see now, I opened up a screen that I can actually control the drive with. Um, so if I hit the start button, we'll see that our drive speed is ramping up. I can also very easily hit stop. We'll stop down. I can hit the start button. We'll be running. I can use this slider here to very easily control the speed set point. Uh, I can actually change direction as a drive by just turning on a reverse bit. These are all input bits that were on that user defined function block that was already designed in the program was written to interface with the, the Emerson VFD drive. So if I hit reverse, you'll see on the screen that our speed reference is going negative. I can flip it back off and then we go back up. I can use the slider again or I can actually go on here and actually just type in uh, a value for speed. And there you go. Simple way of actually putting a, a VFD drive on Profinet. And again, probably very similar to any third party manufacturer that has a VFD drive that will sit on the Profinet field bus. I appreciate all your time. Uh, hopefully it was a good start for understanding how to actually configure an Emerson VFD drive over Profinet to an Emerson pack controller. Thank you very much and have a great day.